This next, folks, is just juicy. Now, I, I am, uh, I'm dry. Where was I yesterday? Where was I yesterday? Oh, I'm, I had to go to a doctor. I had to go to a follow-up appointment. Uh, I, I have, up until yesterday, I had eaten maybe two, it is, well, since what, uh, in 10 days, I'd eaten two bananas and uh, a couple of saltine crackers, and the rest of it was, uh, you know, protein shakes and stuff. I had to go to the doctor yesterday, clean bill of health, everything cool. I'm driving home for the doctor. And I, uh, I'm punching around the satellite radio, and there's really nothing. I'm just, I'm just, nothing, nothing's appealing to me. The idiots that I normally listen to are even worse than usual. And I just don't feel like listening to music, so I, I just, my fingers started going to button number four. And I said, don't do it, don't do it. This is, the, there is divine providence. Don't, do, despite my best efforts to not hit button number four, my finger hit button number four, and up popped CNN. And I'm listening to Wolf Blitzer talking to their legal expert, Jeffrey Tubin. And their world has been turned upside down. Because they have just learned that the Clinton administration also signed executive orders. Bill Clinton personally signed executive orders authorizing warrantless searches of American citizens for the purposes of domestic spying. Now, of course, this doesn't fit the template. The template is... This never happened until Bush did it. There was no president who ever exercised this kind of authority and broke the law until Bush did it. But the problem is that the Washington Post in 1994 had a story quoting Jamie Gorelick, not only suggesting that they did it, but suggesting that they had the inherent authority to do it without even telling Congress about it. And you could just hear they, they, they were, they were this, this, is, this upset the whole apple cart. This just shattered the worldview. This can't be happening. So Wolf brings in Tubin, the legal beagle, the legal expert, to ask him to interpret this. And Blitzer says, uh, Jeffrey, did the Clinton administration essentially suggest that they were entitled to do exactly what the Bush administration has now done? The answer is no, not exactly. What the Clinton administration said all along is that they believe that they were following the FISA statute. Hang that on they here. thought that the FISA statute was all the authority they needed to uh, conduct the surveillance uh, that they did. However, listen, listen, James Gorelick did say in that comment that there was certain inherent authority. The Clinton administration never used that authority as far as they were concerned. And I think that's where the conflict is here. Okay, okay, okay. So the apple cart's been upset. Oh, no, you mean everything Bush has done here has been done by Clinton? Oh, no, we can't have this. This can't possibly be true. Jeffrey, 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 what's the truth? It can't be true, can it? Well, you're right, Wolf, it's not really true. Yes, Jamie Gorelick said that there was certain authority, but they never used it. And that's where the conflict is. Now, stick with me on this. So Wolf then said, and I like Wolf. Now I don't want anybody misunderstanding here. I think uh, Wolf Wolf wants to get things right, but you know he works with editors and stuff that have a worldview. Wolf said, and that's why they're doing this because Wolf. Well, wait a minute, this doesn't jive with everything I've been told. So he's looking into this, and he says, well, the Clinton administration, Justice Department, including Jamie Gorelli, what they were arguing was that U.S. authorities to go ahead and wiretap or even search, I guess, physically search embassies, foreign embassies here in Washington consulates everywhere else around the country without necessarily going for a formal court order and if americans got caught up in the process maybe that was just too bad it was a little tighter than that they said that that surveillance could not include americans the executive order said it, it, it could not include uh... any any surveillance of americans and and that's what and, and that's how the executive order proceeded okay now stick with me on this folks because the the, the explosions about to go off here Wolf then says, well, Senator Cornyn, John Cornyn, Texas, and many other Republican supporters of the administration make in Gorelick's own words when she said that the president has, quote, inherent authority to conduct warrantless physical searches for foreign intelligence purposes. I mean, what they argue, the Republican, Senator Cornyn included, is that physical searches are no different in effect, are, is the same thing as wiretapping. Now, let me say, this is, this is happening yesterday, Wednesday. We have all known this since Monday. Maybe since the weekend. Those of us have been looking into this. We know what Gorelick said. We went up in the Washington Post archives and found that 1994 story. Byron York did the original research on this at National Review Online. That's why the mainstream press will give it no credence, because he's a right winger. They think. They're, they're two different worlds here, folks. But now they, it, it got out. It can't be suppressed. And now 
they're, they're, they're just figuring this out on Wednesday. So now they've got to figure out a way, okay, yeah, it looks bad, but it really isn't. So the question, the Republicans are arguing, to Jeffrey, that, that it really is no different. This, this, this uh, search is the same as wiretaps. Jamie Gorelick at least appeared to say there were certain inherent powers in the presidency that went beyond uh, what FISA uh, provided Stop for. the tape. She didn't at least appear to say anything. She stated unequivocally, we have read the quote, we have the quote, we have put the quote on the website. She, by the way, is denying it to this day. She's denying it today in the, in the uh, Washington Times, but which is even better. But we've got the quote from the Washington Post. I guess she misspoke in her own diary, uh, but, but the, the, to her own diary, lied to her diary, whatever, lied to the Washington Post. It's going to be one of these excuses, but... Uh, she didn't. She didn't appear to say anything. She stated, "The president has inherent powers in the presidency that go beyond FISA, go beyond Congress." The, the Clinton administration always asserted they never went beyond those powers, but there does appear to be a statement of uh, claiming inherent authority. The Bush administration now appears both to be claiming that authority and perhaps using it in this very controversial program that we've been talking about since last week. But there's no evidence that the Clinton administration actually went ahead and wiretapped American citizens without informing or using the FISA court. Absolutely not. In fact, what the Clinton administration has, has said and did was that they followed the FISA law and the FISA law prohibited uh, wiretaps of Americans uh, without a court order. Okay, so yeah, Clinton authorized, but Clinton never used it because Clinton was responsible. Bush, Bush, he's spying, he's power mad, he's got a lust for power, and we need to impeach him. I've never seen anything like it. But Clinton, oh yeah, he authorized it, but he never used it. Now, watching all this yesterday was Victoria Tensing, former assistant attorney general in the Reagan administration and well known uh, in Washington. She's watching this, and she's no doubt pulling out her beautiful red hair. So she calls CNN. She says, I have to go on the air. I have to straighten these people out. Wolf Blitzer says, stand by for a moment, Jeff, stand by. Victoria Tensing has called us. She's a former, <laughs> she's a former Justice Department official. She's well-known Washington attorney. Vicki, you're hearing the discussion I'm having now with Jeff Tubin. You wanted to weigh in. So go ahead. What's your point? The Clinton administration did carry out that authority when they went into Aldrich Ames's house without a warrant. And they argued before the House, Jamie Gorelick did, that they had the inherent, the president had the inherent constitutional authority to do so. And that was in Byron York's report on Monday. And it was taken from the Washington Post in 1994. And we told you about it on this program. The Clinton administration got a warrant, or did not get a warrant, to go sneaking into Aldrich Ames's house. He's the CIA uh, spy that turned tail and was you know, giving uh, secrets to the Russians. So here she calls and she makes this statement, and, uh, and, and, and Blitz, uh, Blitzer says, Well, Aldrich Ames was the former CIA uh, analyst convicted in serving a life sentence. Jeff? Are you familiar with the technical points of that Aldrich Ames search? You know, I, I, I really am not. It's worth Stop noting. Stop the Dol tape. We're not surprised. Of course you're not, because you don't suspect the Clinton people would do anything about which you accuse the Bush administration. Of course you're not aware. But it's been in the paper for three days. No less than the Washington Post. It was at National Review Online. It's been on this program. It's been all over the quote-unquote new media. There are two worlds out there. These people have no clue, folks. They have no idea. This is what I was talking about earlier in the week when I said I am amazed at the, at the overall ignorance. I know what causes it. They've got this worldview, and any fact that challenges it doesn't get in. It bounces off. It gets to an editor. It gets to a producer. Oh, there's a bunch of wackos that think that. Screw that. And they discard it. Here's the rest of Tubin's comment. James pleaded guilty, so there was never a court test of the appropriateness of, of that search. So uh, I don't know, no court ever passed on it. But how, what authority was used, uh, I am afraid to say, I certainly just don't know what was used. Well, I can tell you what Jamie Gorelick said before the House committee. And she said, we, we relied on the inherent authority of, of the president to conduct warrantless searches. All right, that's the quote. And do you know of any other examples, uh, Vicki, besides the Aldrich Ames example that you cite? Uh, no, I don't, but I'm well aware of that one. All right, well... I mean, so they did, you, they did 
nobody was crying for impeachment when Bill Clinton did it in the Aldrey James case. So let's go now to the uh, Washington Times today, headlined by Charles Hurt, warrantless searches not unprecedented. Told you this earlier in the week, previous administrations, as well as the court that oversees national security cases, FISA, agreed with President Bush's position that a president legally may authorize searches without warrants in pursuit of foreign intelligence. Quote, the Department of Justice believes, and the case law supports, that the president has inherent authority to conduct warrantless physical searches for foreign intelligence purposes, and that the president may, as he has done, delegate this authority to the attorney general. That again, the quote from Jamie Gorelick in 1994, before the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. So she admitted Clinton has done, previous presidents have done, and that there was this inherent authority. Such warrantless searches, uh, searches have been at the center of a political fight in Washington after the New York Times bogus story on Friday that the Bush administration had a program to uh, intercept communications between al-Qaeda suspects and persons in this country. A uh, Washington Post report at the time said the new FISA law permits the government, primarily NSA, to continue electronic spying without a court order if it's directed solely at the premise uh, or communications of official powers such as governments, blah, 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 blah. So yesterday, the mainstream press has brought, been, been, been made aware of something that the rest of the country has known for three or four days or 11 years. Uh, and still it has not made it beyond CNN. Yesterday afternoon, New York Times still on the story. Still on the same story they were on last Friday. The Clinton administration kicked down the door of Aldrich Ames. The door to his house conducted a warrantless search of a U.S. citizen. I have not read anything that the Bush administration ever did this or has done this. Have you? There's no, we haven't heard one report of this kind of thing happening during the Bush administration. So did Barbara Boxer, when she learned that Clinton did this, did she ask four legal scholars to look into whether Clinton should be impeached? Did her legal advisor, John Dean, have anything to say about it? The thing is, we don't oppose this. We are consistent. We conservatives and we patriots are consistent. We don't oppose this for national security purposes. In the case of Aldrich Ames, he was a spy. He was selling secrets to the enemy. Now, there's, folks, there's a reason. I could have said the Ruskies. I could have said the Russians. I could have said the Kami Pinkos. But I said the word enemy because that word irritates liberals as much as the word censorship. They hate the word enemy. And do you know why? Because they don't think we have any. They don't like Al-Qaeda being called the enemy. Al-Qaeda is not the Bush is the enemy in their world. But there is no real enemy. We talk about the enemy. They think we're exaggerating, we're extremists, we're over the top, we're off our rockers. So I love just ramming it right down their geeky little throats. But that's exactly what he was doing. Ames was selling secrets to the enemy. And yes, the Soviets were our enemy. Make no mistake about it. They seem to think, the left seems to think, that Democrat presidents are free to use these warrantless searches, in turn American citizens, like FDR did, use the IRS, like Clinton did, and all the rest. We believe in the rule of law, as does President Bush. We oppose internment. We oppose misuse of the IRS. The president does have the power to protect the nation during war. He does have the power. He has the power to intercept communications from the enemy. <laughs> to sympathizers in the United States. I think there's no doubt Bush wants to prevent another 9-11, where the hijackers are receiving communications in Florida and other parts of the U.S. from al-Qaeda bigs overseas. This is the sole motivation for this, but to listen to the left, you would think all he wants to do is spy on them. Now, what, what are you people doing out there on the left that you're afraid somebody's going to discover? This kind of inordinate fear. And look, I'm a civil libertarian. Don't misunderstand here. But this is, you know, we're, we are at war and we've got an enemy who has used these kinds of communications to plot 9-11. But you, you people on the left don't want any ability to find out who's doing or participating in these communications. You're not consistent. You're all for civil liberties except when it comes to protecting the country. And then all of a sudden you want to impeach the president who's doing this. 
you are so fearful that some private thing that you're engaged in is going to be discovered has got me wondering, what are you doing? What are you doing that you don't want us to know about? Because I'll guarantee you, it's nothing we don't already know about. We know what you're doing. We know who you are. We know what kind of pervert you are. We know what kind of, of, of weak, linguine, spine little people you are. We, we know what kind of things you do out there. But there's nothing, you can't keep any secrets. You know, folks, I, I, there's one, there's a, there's a good way to put all of this in perspective for you. These, 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 these little, I'm going to have to really impose myself, um, uh, some discipline on myself here, because I, I am on the verge. <clears throat> these liberals, these people, <laughs> that are all upset about Bush trying to protect the country, and trying to impeach him for that. These are the same liberals, ladies and gentlemen. They went after Robert Bork's video rentals. Does anybody remember that? They went after Bork's video rentals. They went through Clarence Thomas's trash can. Remember that? They are old. You, they can spy all they want. They can violate the law when they spy if they want. But boy, when you are a Republican and you're trying to protect the country, we're going to nail you, and we are going to impeach you. There's no question in any reasonable person's mind the president wants to protect the country, prevent another 9-11. The hijackers were receiving instructions while in Florida from overseas. He wants to be able to stop it. The FISA process is too cumbersome, too slow to do it. So he uses his legitimate constitutional power to do it. And this is why saying that the uh, president authorized spying on U.S. citizens or authorized domestic spying is just a contemptible lie, and we know that it is. These liberals say they, they want to be able to go through your trash can. They want to be able to go through your pharmacy records. They want to be able to go through your medical records. They want to be able to go through your video store rentals. They want to be able to go to the library and find out what kind of porn you might be reading. But they are not going to allow us to do legitimate searches when it comes to the defense of the country. And look at Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, who's all upset, voted against Patriot Act. We can't have this. He's got a couple of clowns on his staff that went and got the social security number or credit card number of credit reports from Michael Steele, lieutenant governor of Maryland. Black guy, wants to be a senator from Maryland. They went and got his credit report, and they plastered it all over the place. Still has been no apology. Talk about spying. Talk about dirty tricks. They didn't ask FISA, they didn't get a warrant to go get any of his private credit information, Lieutenant Governor Michael Steele of Maryland. If we think about this, we can come up with a, probably a whole two hours worth of examples. The point is this, we know what the libs and the media and the Democrats are up to, and it's no good. It's just that simple. It's like my mom used to say, son, that person's up to no good. You, know, it's, you don't need to make it complicated, you don't need to get all flowery with the language. We know what the libs and the media and the Democrats are up to, and it's no good. We see them systematically trying to weaken this nation. And if Iraq goes to hell in the process, so much the better. They're already invested in defeat in Iraq. It doesn't affect them, they don't think, as they go on their vacations in Vail and Aspen and Martha's Vineyard and the like. It's not going to bother them at all. So what if we're hit again? So what if it's only another 3,000 people? Their power means more than any of this to them, and I am dead serious when I say it. And this is not fatigue and a lack of sleep speaking. They don't care if we get hit again. Another 3,000 people, so what? As long as it doesn't happen every day, and they don't have to do something to stop it, it isn't any big deal. That's the whole point of wanting to go back to a pre-9-11 lifestyle and set of circumstances. To look at all of this as just eh, random acts. There's no organized war rush. You're just paranoid. They, we just have to develop a level of understanding with these people, and they, we can make them see that it's not worth what they're doing, and they, let Steven Spielberg make a movie about it, and that will solve everything. Yeah, well, we don't have time to wait for all that, and we certainly don't have the um, time to risk liberals in power with that kind of attitude. Ed, you... you, you I know some of you liberals probably offended. You think I'm saying you don't care if there's another 9-11? Yeah, I'm saying it because I don't see one shred of behavior on the part of any one of them except Lieberman. Now and then, 
that is oriented in that direction. You're trying to undermine everything that's being done to stop another 9-11 from happening. Every damn thing that's being done to try to stop that. Liberals, Democrats trying to undermine it with their willing accomplices in the media. You know, it isn't working. We know it isn't working on a, on a host of levels. There is a great piece in Newsweek today. It's actually uh, 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 on the website at MSNBC, which is where Newsweek's web content goes. And the headline of this story is, Where's the Outrage? Bush's defense of his phone spying program has disturbing echoes of arguments once used by South Africa's apartheid regime. Why Americans should examine the parallels. Story by Arlene Getz. Arlene Getz. Back in the 1980s when I was living in Johannesburg and reporting on apartheid in South Africa, a white neighbor proffered a tasteless confession. She was quite relieved, she told me, that new media restrictions prohibited our reporting on government repression. No matter what Pretoria was detaining, tens of thousands of people without real evidence of wrongdoing, no matter that, no matter that many of them, including children, were being tortured, sometimes to death, no matter that government hit squads were killing political opponents, no matter that police were shooting into crowds of blacks. Does she mention in this story Winnie Mandela's necklacing? I, I'm not even going to read the rest. I'll, I'll, I'll just wager that she doesn't mention that. Uh, Winnie Mandela, if, if you were um, opposed to the uh, anti-apartheid movement, you were black, didn't matter. Winnie Mandela's forces would come grab you, and they'd get a tire. And they would fill it with gasoline, put it around your neck, and light it. It was called necklacing. Now, Nelson Mandela's uh, ex-wife, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. At any rate, Arlene Getz says, I thought about that neighbor this week as reports dribbled out about President George W. Bush's sanctioning of warrantless eavesdropping on American con Now, once again, this is published yesterday, today, not yesterday. She is clueless, literally clueless, thinks this is the first time this has happened, has no idea that Clinton and Carter authorized and used the same thing. She says, I I'm sure there are many well-meaning Americans who agree with their president's explanation that it's all necessary evil. But the nasty echo of apartheid South Africa should at least give them pause. For a South African, the deja vu was frightening. They behaved exactly the same way it used to happen here, vilifying those who were putting forward a slightly different view. So she's all upset that people are not believing the media. Where's the outrage? We in the media are trying to tell you. We are trying to tell you why aren't you listening. Think of apartheid. We're not listening to you because you're lying. We're not listening to you because you're wrong. We're not listening to you because you don't have all the facts. We're not listening to you because you're not reporting all the facts. We're not listening to you because we know what your agenda is, what your motivation is. You want to bring down a president, and you want to put your buddies on the left in power, and the country can't afford that right now, Ms. Getz. You can't fool us anymore, she says. As I've watched this debate play out, it's hard to avoid the conclusion that not enough Americans really care. Aww. <laughs> Big time Newsweek journalist and nobody's listening. <laughs> Why did I go into this business? I don't get paid anything. I have to live in horrible places around the world and now nobody's listening. I don't have any influence. Uh, Ms. Getz, can I, can I proffer to you a, uh, a, a different analysis that you might want to uh, look at? Maybe, just maybe. The American people are a little smarter than you think. And maybe, Ms. Getz, just maybe, we don't care if our government spies on Islamic terrorists. In fact, Ms. Getz, maybe we want them to. Maybe we want the government to ferret out any sleeper cells in this country. You ever stop and think of that? The audacity of trying to draw analogies to this with apartheid tells us exactly where these people are. They're panicking. They're pulling their hair out. They're all upset. They don't have the monopolistic influence they used to have. I have been telling you people this for many, many moons. I, by the way, I didn't know that Clinton and Carter agreed with apartheid. I mean, Bush is just doing what they did. Why wouldn't she write this story back when Clinton and Carter were in the office? 
I mean, if, if, if what's going on now by Bush reminds her of apartheid, then I'm certain the same thing could be said about Bill Clinton and George Bush, or, or Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, especially the first black president. Why didn't we get these stories back then? And why do we get these stories or these, uh, the, uh, the, the sense of warning from Barbara Boxer? Why does she go consult legal authorities, scholars like John Dean, and uh, suggest maybe that we look into impeachment of Bill Clinton? Oh, sorry. There's a reason. <laughs> we already did that.